What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today, I just want to talk about how pathetic it is to see grown adult black men champion and being shields for white political parties. I mean, it's it's so pathetic. And they look like clowns, all of them. All of them look like clowns because we black people are spending so much energy fighting battles on behalf of other groups of people who don't have our best interests at hand. We're wasting time and energy. We're wasting effort, relationships. We're burning bridges to champion the cause of white supremacist institutions that was built for white people, you know, to benefit white people. When we could be putting all our energy and our our compassion and all of our our um, resolve into fighting for true black African liberation, we should be Africanist. All right, we shouldn't be Democrat. We shouldn't be Republican. We should be African and have African-centered policies and ideologies. And we should pit the Democrats and the Republicans against each other for our benefit. That's what we should be doing. We should be leveraging them for our benefit, right? And we do that to a certain extent with the Democratic Party. We try to leverage them as best as we can, you know, to get, you know, certain things out of it. And it's, it's successful to a certain degree because of the nature of their version of white supremacy, which is globalism, meaning they'll allow you to participate, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got to play by their rules. But there's enough space to break their rules or create your own rules over there. But at the same time, it's still the white man's Democratic Party until the black man could overrun that Democratic Party and make that party a black oriented party. That's what has to happen. The only way we can have real change in this country is either take over, take completely take over with numbers, sheer numbers, one of these political parties, and then have our people back that party up unapologetically and unequivocally, no matter what, to let the rest of the world know we're serious and if you want this voting block, you're gonna have to give us something, all right? But this video is for the extra, the, the, the ones that, the extra clowns, who campaign for the Republican Party, which out of both parties, because simple minds may believe that both Democrats and Republicans are the same, but they are not the same. They are two different groups of white supremacy, white supremacists, and they have two different agendas, and they go about it two different ways and two different degrees of, of immorality, okay? Now, the Republicans have been telling us that they don't want us. No matter how much we try to push, some people try to push black people towards the Republican Party, the Republican Party has let it be known that they are not interested in, in partnering with black people. They are, not in, they are not interested in allying with black people to push any type of agenda because their agenda is to disenfranchise black people specifically and other peoples of color because they see us as the enemy, all right? And I keep telling you, we've never been American. We've never been American. American doesn't mean us. American means white man. How do you say white without saying white? American, patriot. That's how you say white without you know saying white. How do you say black without saying black? Woke. <laughs> TRC, any little word that will, uh, oh, uh, uh, crime, cr you know, crime always means black, right? Criminals means black. Minority, even though we're not the minority, I think we should be done calling ourselves minority. We should start calling ourselves the majority because that's the truth. We're the majority. We should say we're the majority and the European minority, and that's what you start calling the minorities. But I'm going to attach something here. So you can see firsthand primary evidence out their mouths that they don't want you. You see, the Republican Party would never allow a black person or Indian people, because you see them Indians, Indians try to out-coon the Kunarians, 
right? They have mastered. Uh, they have. They are competing with the black coons to out coon the coons, right? They are. Is a battle between coons who can out coon other coon, and definitely Indians like Nikki Haley, who will change her name. You see, us Africans, we lost our names. They took it from us. These in, these 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 coonarians from the Indian side, they will give up their name. They will willingly give up their Indian identity, their Indian name. They'll give it up for whiteness. They'll try to pretend like they're white and hopefully maybe you just don't notice that they're not white, right? And Republicans, they'll do what they always do. They will remind their constituents, the people who they pander to, to vote, they remind them that you're not, you're not, you're not white, right? Like Donald Trump right now is currently reminding his compatriots, the people who want to vote for him, that hey, guess what? <laughs> you know that Nikki Haley? You know, she's probably not a citizen. You know, that's another thing they use. He's pr she's probably not a citizen. Does that not sound familiar? Didn't uh, Trump do the same thing to Obama? Did the same thing to Ted Cruz, who's a Republican, white guy, right? And he's doing the same thing to Nikki Haley. Saying, hey, white people, white Americans, ha, hey, 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 hey. You know they're not one of us, right? You know that, right? Keep that in mind at the ballot box. Plausible deniability, make sure you keep that in notation. So I say that to say for all the Coonarians who like to harp on when Biden said, you don't vote Democrat, you're not black. Yeah, that was pretty insensitive to say, right? It's pretty stupid, right? But let's not pretend like Donald Trump hadn't said on purpose way more racist things and actually done racist things because he had the power to do racist things. Let's not forget that, right? So we're going to hold one old geezer white guy to, to, to a certain standard. We need to hold the other old white geezer to that very same standard. And when you hold him to that standard, he's way worse than the the other geezer that's in the White House when it comes to, you know, things he's said about black people. But yeah, uh, black people look like look like fools campaigning for a group of people that don't want to have anything to do with them. Republicans are disgusted by you middle-aged, fat, black Republicans. Because if you notice, almost every one of these, almost every one of these Republican black dudes are middle-aged, fat, and short. Have you noticed that? I'm talking about everywhere. Go everywhere. Everywhere. The majority of them are a bunch of fat, middle-aged men. Have you know? I mean, I'm just, I'm not, look. I'm just saying. Look at them. All of them. They all, all of them got the same aesthetic. I don't know what that is about, but they do, right? You, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But, yeah, it's embarrassing. They, they look like clowns, right? Because they're advocating and they're they're basically kissing the ass of these white men. They're champion white causes. They are shunning anything that's anti-white, right? They are defending these white people. While at the same time, these white people in the Republican Party are openly saying that we don't want you. We don't, we're not coming, we don't care about you. There was a nonpartisan or black organization that tried to get some Republicans to come out and talk to black people, you know, giving the Republicans an opportunity to tell them what policies, you know, that, that they're proposing that will benefit black people, trying to give them an opportunity. These black people opened the doors to Republicans, right? You know what the Republicans did? You know what the Republicans did? Nothing. They don't want to show up. They didn't care. Because Republicans do not care about the black vote and they do not care about pandering to black people. You know why they don't care about pandering to black people? Because if they, pa I gotta talk loud because I got this ambulance, but I don't stop. If they have to pander to black people, the white people who are their main voting block are gonna be upset because their whole thing is they're afraid of black people and brown people. They think that brown people and black people are getting too many resources. They think black people and brown people are 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 these rich guys that live in the cities that they see on TV. The same TV that we all watch that make black people look like we're all just rich gangsters, thugs, and this and that. They watch that same TV. They think that we're doing pretty good. When they turn the TV on, all they see is a bunch of black people, rich black people in the entertainment industry, in sports, everywhere on TV. All they see is black. So the last thing they want is see their politicians pandering to the very same people who they got a problem with. 
That's why Republicans are not going to waste their time coming to talk to you black folks who think that the Republicans got something for you. Republicans ain't got shit for you. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to put this proof here because black people really need to get their butts out of their heads and stop thinking that the Republican Party has anything for us. They don't want us. They don't need us. We are their enemy. And if you're over there kissing their ass while they while you're on your knees, you're kissing the ass while they're kicking you in the fucking face, then you ain't got nothing but yourself to blame while you're looking like a fool and you're burning bridges with your own community to campaign for a, a group of people that wouldn't piss on you if you was on fire. It's just the truth. Anyway, that's all I got to say for now, guys. Afro Think Tank, learn some teacher. I'm out. Iowa Brown and Black presidential form is the oldest of its kind in the country. It happens every four years when we have an election. But this year, well, nearly all Republicans, man, nah, we ain't coming. We ain't coming. Joining us right now uh, to talk about uh, this uh, is the uh, co-founder uh, of the non nonpartisan group, uh, which was formed, of course, uh, in 1984, is um, former Iowa State Representative uh, Wayne Ford. How you doing, Doc? Uh, how you doing, Roland? Thank you very much, Roland, for having me on. Thank you. So, uh, so, so what, what, ha what happened here? Uh, you got obviously, you know, Trump is leading. Uh, who, who said yes and who said no? Well, you know, Roland, we've been doing this uh, for since 1984. And uh, as of right now, you know, I mean, no uh, presidential Republican candidate said they wanted to come besides uh, Mr. Ryan Brinkley. He did commit a long time ago. But all the candidates, even when they first started running, Mr. Brinkley committed a long time ago. But we've been doing this so long, Roland, that I thought sooner or later they all will commit. Our last one won an Emmy Award. But as of right now, and it's scheduled for January the 13th, 2024, no, nobody's committed besides Ryan Brinkley, and that's why my board canceled the form. First of all, who the hell is Ryan Brinkley? I don't even know who that is. <laughs> well, I understand, but he's a uh, candidate who, who's running. There was a lot of candidates who decided to run when we first started. But Mr. Brinkley was the first one who, who committed. So, who was a candidate so, committed so you're telling me that uh, Nikki Haley, uh, who spent lots of time with her nonsensical slavery comments on her CNN debate, Vivek uh, Ramaswamy, who, who uh, he runs his mouth on everything, uh, Christie, um, uh, Ron DeSantis, none of these folks want to come talk to black and brown folk about the issues we care about, huh? That's right. That's right, Roland. As of right now, none of them, and that's why we canceled the forum. See, th this is why I keep trying to ex explain to people that they don't care about black voters. They don't care about issues that we issues, issues, issues that matter to us because they frankly see Iowa as a white evangelical state. Roland, and, and I, I hear you on that, but I tell people that we are the state they gave the country, you know, President Obama, as you know, he won the Iowa caucus here twice in a row. So there's some things that's going on. We were a purple state, now we're a red state. The, uh, the, the brown and black group, we are nonpartisan. But the bottom line is, Robert, this is the second time. In 2016, we had Democrats and Republicans, because we're the first in the country, and we had everybody ready to go. Right before the Republican forum happened, they canceled out. So this is the second time this has happened to us, and we've been doing this for almost 40 years. First time, uh, and, and, and so uh, what has been the response from other people, black and brown people in Iowa to this? They're very disappointed. When it came out that the Iowa caucus would be held on Martin Luther King's birthday, I live in Iowa. I've been living here in, since 1972. You know, I'm originally from Washington, D.C. So when that first happened, there was a lot of us who said, hey, Martin Luther King's birthday, the Iowa caucus, that's, yeah, hey, that's, that's good. So we're saying that we're going to do our forum two days before Martin Luther King's birthday on the 13th. Martin Luther King's birthday is on the 15th. Great deal of excitement. We all was excited because of the correlation of the two events. Well, that's not happening. So there's a lot of people who are very, very disappointed. Donald Trump feels cornered. There is no limit to how low he will go. And with Nikki Haley closing the gap on the former president in the latest poll out of New Hampshire, trailing him by just seven points, according to new polling, Trump has resorted to an oh-so-familiar and oh-so-disgusting line of attack. 
NBC News reporting, quote, Trump posted an article on his Truth Social account from a right wing outlet that claimed Haley, his GOP rival, is ineligible to be president because her parents were not U.S. citizens when she was born. Haley was born in South Carolina and has lived in the U.S. her entire life. Her parents were immigrants who became citizens after her birth in 1972. As we know too well, Haley is not the first victim of Trump's racist birtherism. She is just the latest. Trump has attempted to question the citizenship of former President Barack Obama, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, and Vice President Kamala Harris. Or as Nikki Haley herself joked back in 2016, it won't really feel like I made it until Donald Trump demands to see my birth certificate.